Back in my Kirby's Dream Buffet video, I said this. Next year, we're gonna have a bit of a break, right? That means that, you know, they'll step back and they'll be like, okay, maybe this year we don't make one or two Kirby games in the same year and shadow drop them on Twitter. That's, that's going to happen. That video released August 28th, 2022. They announced this game two weeks later. Dude, like, there's really nothing easier than being a Kirby fan, like, honestly. If you're anti-Kirby, somehow, and you're annoyed with all of the preferential treatment this franchise gets from Nintendo, I understand, I really do. We just gotta sit here and the coolest things ever will happen to us, and Captain Falcon is still dead. It's like this company can't let a single Direct go by without announcing something for Kirby. Forgotten Land and Dream Buffet were still both pretty fresh and bam, doesn't matter. Now the Wii game Return to Dreamland is getting remastered for the Switch very soon. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, sure, why not? Kirby's Return to Return to Dreamland? Quite frankly, I did figure that when this game was gonna come to the Switch, I did expect a bit of a trilogy pack with Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot as well. Would've made for a sick 30th anniversary celebration pack, and I mean, hey, if Metopia of all games can get remade for the Switch, why can't those? But I think that's just me, as a Kirby fan, accustomed to being a spoiled little brat. I can hear it now. Kirby Triple Deluxe? Deluxe. Easy money right there. <laughs> well, I mean, there simply aren't enough Kirby games for me to play. Though, that being said, right before RTDLDX released, Nintendo announced in another Direct that, you know what, Tilt and Tumble and Amazing Mirror for the Game Boy and GBA Switch Online apps respectively, those are coming, and it's a bigger deal than you would initially think. Yeah, these are usually just typical ROM drops, and that's it. I mean, Dreamland 1 got released as soon as the app did. But actually, this means we will have an official console port of Tilt and Tumble for the first time with native motion controls. Incredible. I don't know if those GameCube holding speedrunners will make the jump over to the Switch Pro Controller, but damn it, it's a tilt in the right direction. And Amazing Mirror is gonna be on an emulator that has official online play? Oh my god? I know these emulators just inherently have online play, so it's to be expected, but dude, Amazing Mirror Online! That's incredible! And just those announcements on top of all of the additions to this remaster, man, like I said, us Kirby fans really just have to sit here and relax, and the best things will happen. Sorry about the uh, mad ramblings of a Kirby fan here going through a really good time in my life. This, uh, this timeline is treating someone like me really good right about now. But the star of the show for today, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Uh, it's an interesting choice. I'm all for more Kirby content, obviously, as well as more Wii games getting ported. Big fan of that as well. It's just been less than a year since Forgotten Land, and I feel really weird that we're already here. Though, I guess, realistically, the timing does make a little bit more sense than you would initially think. Return to Dreamland is now the fourth Kirby game to get the remake treatment, fifth if you count Superstar Stacker as a remake, I don't know why you would, but some people do. And if you look at the timing in between the original's release as well as the remake's release, you can see that we're looking at roughly 4100 days, which isn't too far off from the duration of time between Adventure and Superstar and their respective remakes. The timing actually makes total sense. Extra Epic Yarn came out the soonest and Hey, maybe that's why it's the weakest one. You gotta shoot closer to that 4,000 day mark. That's the ticket. This is a moment that doubled as not only a fun piece of trivia, but also a reminder that we're all progressively getting older. Look at me reviewing the original Wii game all those years ago. This little idiot had no clue what the next few years had in store for him. Also, uh, did you know that in Japan they kept Wii in the name? So it's, it's Kirby Wii Deluxe? Uh, did you also know that while the game was called Kirby's Adventure Wii in Europe originally, they went ahead and took the Return to Dreamland name, so now the name's different depending on what console, as opposed to America where it's Return to Dreamland the entire time. Does anyone else find this interesting or am I way too far gone? Man, I still remember when this game was originally revealed as just Kirby Wii. It's easy to forget just how important this game was for this franchise. Kirby's return to Dreamland? When did he ever leave, right? Well, believe it or not, there did used to be a time where Kirby didn't get love every 20 minutes from Nintendo. After 64, The Crystal Shards in 2000, the franchise was mostly relegated to spin-offs and remakes, and the platformers that did release, Amazing Mirror and Squeak Squad, while both fun in their own regards, it was evident that they didn't have the amount of love and polish that the games deserved, probably in part due to being handed off to another developer, Flagship. 
Only in 2010, with Epic Yarn, did we finally see Kirby getting the big spotlight again. It had been 10 years since Kirby felt like a big deal. There was that glimmer of hope with a GameCube game, but as we all know, that was in development purgatory and eventually scrapped with elements from that build showing up in later games. And speaking of, did you see that new footage of that GameCube game was actually discovered randomly in 2022? That's... Wow, footage once thought to be lost just happened to show up on YouTube 17 years later. That's... That, what? This is what I'm saying. Us Kirby fans have to do nothing and we see some really cool sh**. And if we go even further down this rabbit hole, remember when Nintendo dropped an Awada Ask segment that revealed that not only was that GameCube game cancelled, but there were two other games in development too that never saw the light of day? Well, obviously the four-player co-op one was a big selling point for Return, as well as Star Allies in the future. There's this sort of isometric one that managed to finally show up in Blowout Blast, obviously expanded upon greatly with Forgotten Land. But this third one here, the side-scroller with a cel-shaded art style? Oh, well, well, how about that? Obviously, art style preference is subjective, whether or not you dig the remaster's outline style. You could argue that Battle Royale had a similar art style, but nobody actually played that game. I could just be grasping at thin air here, that is totally possible, but I'm gonna call Return to Dreamland Deluxe closure after so many years of rare information drops for cancelled Kirby games. And that is, that's actually really awesome. Yeah, I think I have an unhealthy obsession. I think that much is clear. Oh, this. Uh, this is a Kirby cup that they released at Kung Fu Tea locations. It had like a, a pink berry drink. It was to celebrate the release of Forgotten Land. It was pretty good from what I remember. You can't get it anymore. It was like a year ago at this point. But uh, I kept the cup. And I still use it. That tastes just like Kirby. I saw some people say that because Sand Kirby is in this game, you thought I was gonna like, for a gag, eat sand? What's wrong with you people? Also imperative that I mention that, of course, I did buy this game on launch, and then I proceeded to play the entire game in a live stream for eight hours, did the main campaign and the Magalore mode back-to-back -back in one continuous stream. That was crazy, and then 24 hours later, bam. 100% completion. Like I said, unhealthy obsession. Important question right out of the gate, in this remaster, does King Dedede still do the thing on the title screen? The game's perfect. The story begins in the peaceful world of Dreamland. Aw, oh, gets the butterfly. I am shattered beyond repair and there is no saving me. A mysterious ship crashes, Magalore needs your help to repair it. It's a pretty typical story. Uh, something bad is happening and you're the good guy, so you gotta go, gotta go save the day. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. There's not a whole lot more to elaborate on here. Magalore is one of the most trustworthy characters in this franchise, and I will do anything he says. But you know what? This whole new King Dedede thing really has me thinking far too hard about this newer redesign. Club Penguin looking ass. They've given this dude so many redesigns in his life, they can't stick to one, it's a miracle we got the same design for two games back to back. We got this adorable little ball of chub in 64, this odd always mean looking design in Triple Deluxe. Wasn't bad, he just looked very angry. His anime look, he was always kinda too big, always put me off, not gonna lie. I think I'm also in the minority of not really digging the Star Allies design, like Buff Diddy was funny for a minute, but even when he's not buff, this guy right here, he's a... He's a little too long for my liking. And then Forgotten Land came out and gave us a king that was almost perfect! The adorable 64 styled big blue ball of simultaneous happiness and anger, but modernized. Just with a pretty cool tribal look that worked well for that game given his insane boss battles. So in Deluxe, having that model with his classic outfit, dare I say we have reached peak Dedede. I definitely like this more than the original Wii model. But points also go to Smash DDD. that's pretty damn close to the top two. And why Stone Kirby in this game can summon Star Allies DDD and not new DDD, I don't know. I'm starting to believe in a DDD multiverse. Also, on the topic of redesigns, shout out to this Twitter user here for pointing out that the enemy Waddle Dees and the friend Waddle Dees in this game use the models from Star Allies and Forgotten Land respectively, based off of pretty slight differences in the face. This is pretty important information. Really doing a great job doing anything but talking about the actual game itself, I apologize about that. While getting a brand new Return to Form Kirby game was actually super refreshing back in 2011, nothing changes the fact that, yep, this is a Kirby game alright. Return to Dreamland was Nintendo's attempt to take the formula of Kirby games that worked so well in the past, like Adventure and Superstar, and just polish the hell out of it. Something they would continue to improve upon with the 3DS sequels. 
The basic mechanics all feel nice and tight. All of the copy abilities do the superstar thing of having multiple attacks that can be pulled off pending your button inputs. Each level has multiple shiny things to collect, so you actually have to pay attention to your surroundings instead of just plowing through the levels. And it's all bundled together with a great presentation for both the visuals and the soundtrack. All really great stuff. And even back on the Wii, I always thought this game looked really nice. All of the colors just pop, the foreground pieces are nicely detailed, and if you ever just stare off into the background, the amount of detail that goes into every single landscape is actually kind of stunning. It's easy to not even consider them because you're always running through them and focusing on what's in front of you instead of what's behind you, but if you ever get a second to chill out and just look at the back, there's a lot going on there. And then we jump on over to Deluxe, and yeah, there's the matter of the most noticeable difference on the surface. We have outlines now. Rather than simply having the game look like it's running through Dolphin on max settings, we actually have a pretty noticeable art style shift. The foreground and background elements have a lot more detail, some areas go for a bit more of a pastel -y color palette, I think it's very pleasing. And yeah, all of the characters have outlines now. Interesting choice, not like the characters ever blended into the background from my experience in the past, but for what it's worth, I do really love how this looks. I prefer when art styles have a bit more extra artistic personality to them, and realistically, Return to Dreamland was always relatively uninspired in terms of its style. Yeah, incredibly detailed, for sure, but grassland, desert, underwater, snow, volcano, some levels later on are a little bit more memorable, like the mechanical stages, and especially the sky tower, but in general, it is pretty standard stuff. Not a problem necessarily, but certainly doesn't stand out compared to some of the environments and themes of the 3DS games. So for me, this new style adds a lot to help return appear more striking. And dude, on the OLED screen, are you kidding me with this? This looks... God, ah, this... this looks incredible! Granted, I do think the outlines could have still been an option. Like, two days after the demo released, there was a mod that removed the outlines and it looks... fine. But whatever, I still like them. It's even more visually interesting when we compare this directly with the Kirby Adventure built for the Switch, Star Allies. Even with the base Wii version, yeah, I think Return looks better. So clearly, Deluxe blows that right out of the water. Star Allies just didn't really have much of a style that let things pop as much as Deluxe does. And also, gotta say, it's really nice having a console Kirby game now that runs at 60 FPS. It's about damn time. I've said this once, I'll say it a million times, I am no frame rate snob, but when all of the other modern Kirby games run at 60 and Star Allies ran at 30, it looks kinda gross. It was fine with Forgotten Land since that game was an entirely different format, but for the 2D games, it was jarring to me in 2018, still jarring in 2023. And hell, in recent years, there was even a mod developed just to push Star Allies to 60, and it looks so much better. All I'm saying is yes, Return to Dreamland Deluxe looks really good. It's no Metroid Prime Remastered, because Kirby's better. The soundtrack is just as good as it ever was, that much was a given, though there has been some changes here too, mostly in regards to what songs play where. One of the secret HAL rooms now plays music from Dream Buffet, the mini boss tower in Nutty Noon now plays a remix of the Superstar boss battle theme instead of the King Dedede theme, the same stage in Extra Mode plays Stage of the Partners from Kirby Fighters 2, the second phase of the HRD3 fight uses Roar of Dedede from Forgotten Land now, which is an incredible change. Not a ton of differences here, but just plenty of really good fan service. Wow, the new game in a series with consistently good games is good. I am shocked and appalled with this information. You see, what I was most interested in, what my big dumb baby brain was interested in, was just what was going to be new about this release. You know, when it comes to remakes, remasters, re-releases, whatever you want to call them, Nintendo's track record is all over the place. We could get Bowser's Fury, we could get new funky mode. And for this one, I mean, come on now, what are you gonna have in this Kirby game that's gonna be good for new players, but also people like me who have played this game like a dozen times in the past? I'm not lying, like a dozen times. Like I said, unhealthy obsession. First and foremost, you can now taunt with the right stick. Yeah, the Wii game didn't have that, Deluxe is better, 10 out of 10. Okay, but for real now, they added diagonal swimming to this version. This is a game changer, you do not understand how exciting this is. For the first time in one of these Kirby remasters, remakes, whatever you want to call them, we have brand new abilities. First up, we got Mecha. You're a Gundam now, this is sick. You got a laser you can charge up, you can shoot some projectiles of the fire and electric variety. You got a sweet jetpack, and these super-powered hands too. This is pretty badass, honestly, though a bit unwieldy at times if I'm being honest. Like, there's this really cool charge-forward backflip laser combo that looks awesome, but I feel like it doesn't do as much damage as it should. It looks like it would be devastating, but it feels like nothing actually happens. The outfit is certainly better than its utility. Maybe I just need to get better at it? I don't know. Make sure to put it in the next game, you cowards. 
And then we got sand. Oh my god, this one's incredible. Harnessing the power of pocket sand, you can attack in every direction in a handful of different ways, and it feels like every single grain of sand Kirby pulls out does incredible damage. This ability destroys bosses. Dude, like, just hold the block button and you're invulnerable forever. And then you can shoot out into the sky doing a surprising amount of damage. Dude, sand is insane. Plus you look like Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and like... Oh, yeah! I can't believe I like sand more than Mecha here. Both abilities each have a new challenge room in the Star Cutter now, and that's pretty cool. Considering how strict those rooms are to get gold rankings, let alone platinum rankings, these are the perfect ways to learn what these abilities have in store. Yo, even the sand enemy is cuter than the mecha one, like, this is not the outcome I expected. Oh, and uh, also I can't forget to mention that uh, Festival from Star Allies is in this game now. Hooray? The only other time new abilities were added to a re-release, it was the Ravel abilities in Extra Epic Yarn. And considering that game didn't have copy abilities in the first place, I thought their inclusion was unnecessary, honestly. But here, yeah, they're fine. They don't really fill a void that the original game was lacking, but the more power-ups, the better in my opinion. Need I remind you just how good Sand is again? I got into an argument on Twitter about whether or not Sand is the 69th ability in this franchise, and I'm sorry to report that... No, it's not. Though I get the excitement. Sure, if you count like the anime exclusives and does anybody count normal as an ability? Sorry, that's weird if you do. Strictly speaking, from the games, from all of these main adventures on Nintendo consoles, Mecha and Sand are abilities 67 and 68 respectively. I would know, I did a whole ass list ranking all of them. How are some of these people trying to tell me that I'm wrong? That video had 67 entries and didn't even include sand because they revealed it shortly after I made that video because Nintendo actually hates me and wanted that video irrelevant as soon as possible. In regards to where I would put these abilities on that ranking list, uh, I mean, I think I was pretty dead on with Mecha's placement. I think mid 20s is a perfect spot for that one, but sand? Like, Dude, like, I, I, I don't know, maybe in my top 10? This definitely became my arena go-to ability. Stupid Galactonite here did not stand a chance. And this dude's like a god. Eat a million granular rocks, you intergalactic purple menace. You ain't got nothing on Dio Kirby. But at the end of the day, what this does mean is it doesn't matter what the next Kirby game is, what the next ability is, no matter what, 69 is right around the corner. Interestingly enough, some of the returning abilities got modified as well. The energy sword move that debuted in Triple Deluxe is here now, uh, Fire has a couple of new moves as well, one when you're at a standstill and one when you're rolling, and the hammer flip move that you're really used to now because it's super powerful and also destroys bosses, I totally forgot that that wasn't in the original Wii game. It's here now though. They even recorded a new for the microphone ability. God, this is... This is so much to take in. One of my favorite things with these Kirby games and the fan service is the stone transformations, and we have a couple new ones here. Magalore on the Star Cutter, Carby from Forgotten Land, the fat boy from Gene Buffet, really like that one. And this one did show up in Star Allies, but hey, it's QB on Mount Fuji. Wild QB sighted. This is so exciting. Some techniques have also been modified for King Dedede, Meta Knight, and Bandana D in co-op to more match how they played in more recent games, and that's pretty cool too. Found this out because even though I'm not a huge fan of co-op in my platformers, you can still play as these characters in the arena mode. Hell yeah. I know I'm gonna sound selfish, but if there was anything I do wish they added, I do think the challenge stages from Dream Collection would have been a really cool bonus. That content is still trapped on the Wii, so it would have been nice to, you know, not have that be the case. I have to assume there was some hesitation because Smash was an ability for one of them, and Smash isn't in this game, and they had to prioritize Festival instead, you know, I get it. But considering this was likely their only chance for this content to come back, that's kind of upsetting. This would have also been a pretty cool time to bring back the Super Spark and Super Cutter abilities that are cut content. Why not? A re-release is always the perfect time to bring some of that stuff back. Oh yeah, the super abilities. One of the big gimmicks with Return to Dreamland were these areas where you would get a fancy super ability, you start shining something fierce, and with the push of a button, you get essentially a little screen nuke. It's really cool, and Kirby is really cute while doing so. Mechanically, I never really thought these were that great. Once you get past that flashy style, you feel powerful, for sure, but these rooms that you get these abilities in equate to just holding forward and pressing a button when something dare stands in your path. And at the end of the day, they were just a means to get into these portals that transport you to purgatory for a little chase segment and a mini boss fight. It gets the job done, but it's not something I'm super excited about. Like, I think Super Suck and Triple Deluxe is way better. Gameplay-wise, it's pretty formulaic. 
Except for that one time that you become the head of a snowman, that part's perfect. But hey, back on topic with differences with this deluxe version, each of the abilities now have a lot better animation when you first get them. It used to be when you would get the ability, Kirby would do a nice little, hey, look, I got it, and then you'd get into the gameplay. But here, oh, the camera's swooping, Kirby's a lot more emotional about this whole ordeal. This is great. I oh, I love this. Oh, it's so, oh, it's so nice. But just in case you don't like those and want to get right back to the action, well, now you can skip the cutscenes too. Couldn't do that in the original. They've added the Gigant Sword and the Morpho Sword to the Ultra Sword lineup, that's pretty sick. Enemies will now fly and hit the screen with intense force when you take them out with one of the attacks, that's just a cool touch. If we're going for style over substance with the whole super ability thing, doubling down on the style was certainly the right call. I like these changes a lot. Super Suck is still better though. They even brought back the old animations from the Wii game during one of the final boss fights. That's a pretty cool throwback. And outside of the abilities themselves, there's even more minor visual changes. Like this part early on in the game with the super fire ability where you burn down this big tree in the original and the portal just shows up in the middle. Well now there's a little cutscene where the tree will burn down and fall into the background. Cool! That was my major complaint with the original game. Ooh, the screen transitions are new here too. There's, there's, there is so much visual polish added to Deluxe. Oh man, what else? Okay, so there's a helper Magalor mechanic now, where Magalor will give you health when it's low and pick you up when you fall down pits. That's nice of him. Certainly not something that someone with evil intentions would ever do. I like him. I like him a lot. He's got a bright future. You can also now store items Super Mario World style. Uh, sure? The game never really needed to be easier, but hey, anything for accessibility to newer players is fine by me. Conversely, the harder extra mode is still here, unlocked after beating the game with roughly 70% completion. And like in the original, it's the same adventure, just made a bit more difficult. Harder bosses with some cosmetic changes, more enemies, smaller health bar with less health pickups, and an extra mode exclusive boss near the end of the game. Which, yes, is a throwback to the cancelled GameCube game. In Deluxe's extra mode, there are even more enemies and obstacles compared to the original, but quite frankly, without direct comparison, I couldn't tell the difference. I still died a bunch because of the shorter health bar. I just can't tell if the enemy that killed me was in the original or not. So sue me, I'm a fake Kirby fan. There's a new past adventure screen on the main menu now, continuing the current trend of Nintendo reminding us just how often they make these damn games with no sign of stopping anytime soon. They added amiibo support so you can get item drops whenever you want. Okay. Of course, co-op is still present, but unfortunately, there is no online play for this. There never was any indicator that there was going to be online, but hey, once again, I was never a co-op platformer guy, wasn't going to affect me either way, but I can tell that there are a lot of people online who are upset at the omission. And if you are one of the upset ones, consider this. He's actually called Bandana Waddle Dee in this one. He was just Waddle Dee in the original, but happened to wear a bandana. He's finally Bandana Waddle Dee. This is a big deal, okay? Instead, online play is restricted to the new minigame mode, Merry Magoland. Because standard minigame selection menus are for losers and Kirby is not a loser, damn it. Oh, uh, no, not the whole minigame mode, my apologies. Just, uh, just one. Just one of them is online. Yay. Oh man, this Magalore dude is great. He is the best. He's taken me out of pitfalls, he's giving me items, and he made an entire ass theme park, dude. This guy, come on now. He can do nothing wrong. We got a whopping 10 sub-games in this one, the most of any game in the franchise, holy cow. For new games, we have Magalore's Tome Trackers, where a specific book cover gets shown, and it's a race to get to it in the pile first. Plus, you're all wearing school caps. It's adorable. And Booming Blasters, where we give everybody a gun and have a good ol' round of deathmatch. I'm glad Kirby continues to practice his Second Amendment rights. As for the other 8 sub-games, they're all returning from older Kirby games. Yes! We have Egg Catcher from Adventure, Samurai Kirby from Superstar, Checkerboard Chase from 64, Bomb Rally from Nightmare in Dreamland, Crackety Hack from Amazing Mirror, Smash Ride from Squeak Squad, Kirby on the Draw from Superstar Ultra, and Ninja Dojo returning from the original Return to Dreamland. This is so damn cool. The music when you're on the difficulty selection screens are remixes of each game's respective menus. The victory screens are all identical from their source games too, like the Kirby 64 award screen is exactly the same, yes! Listen, I've never been someone who's hard to please, okay? Anything remade from this franchise, I think, is the coolest thing. Seeing Egg Catcher show up after so long in HD, the music is remade, both Kirby and DDD have the baby chicks popping out of their mouths, this is peak Kirby right here. It's just a shame we don't see the chicks popping out of Meta Knight's masks or Waddle Dee's mouth. I mean, the anime shows that he can eat, so they, they could have they put that in the game. And then the online mode in question is a separate entity entirely, Samurai Kirby 100, where you and 99 other Kirbys around the world see who can press the A button the fastest. 
you could, quite frankly, tell me these are all CPU players and I couldn't tell you the difference. I don't know why this is online. I feel a stronger connection to Manager Magalore telling me stats. I was about to say that this was an incredibly dumb inclusion, but then I managed to get first, so... Now I would be upset if this wasn't here. Yo, check out this crazy play in the standard Samurai Kirby. Well, I'd be darn tootin' I'm the, I'm the fastest hand in the old wild, the old wild Samurai West. In all of these additions, we did lose Scope Shot, though. This is so sad. I did always like Ninja Dojo more, so I don't really feel the same pain, but kind of strange that they decided to get rid of one of them at all. Adding salt to the wound, the second HAL room now plays the Scope Shot title theme. Why? <laughs> like, why did HAL go for the throat on this one? Oh yeah, before I forget, they also added a third HAL room to the game that wasn't in the original. Dude, this company loves the Kirby franchise so much, it's wild. This is true love right here. Alongside all of the sub-games, Mary Magoland comes with 100 missions, and... I mean, that's pretty refreshing. Usually the sub-games are just there for a fun little distraction and nothing more, but now there is a whopping 100 achievements to go for. Many of them are very basic. You beat all the difficulties, for example. Do particularly well in some harder difficulties, like catching 20 eggs and Egg Catcher level 3 and play each of the games with a specific mask, which, yes, there are unlockable masks in this game as well. This adds a lot of gameplay time to the 100% goal right here, because once you finish all 100 of these achievements, and you think you're done, stupid Magalore throws another 20 at you that are super tough! Tome Tracker's level 3, winning this mode with 18 points, made me want to commit crimes. Completing all of these back to back took me about three and a half hours, though admittedly, I did definitely surprise myself with some of these. Like one of these is to get at least 20th place in Samurai Kirby 100. And I hit first place on my second attempt, so... Yeah, you know what, I am gonna brag actually, I feel really good about that one. Mary Magoland, the happiest place on Earth, would return and spend too much money there again. Look at it just sitting there in the background at the start of Nutty Noon now. I love it. It's like it's a real place. Oh yeah, can't really gloss over the mask thing. It's kind of a cute addition. For extra fan service, you can unlock the faces of a bunch of characters throughout the series by collecting these Merry Magoland tickets. It's pretty cute. I mean, definitely something to make co-op a little bit more interesting, but some of them also make noises. So getting to run through these levels as Kirby making masked DDD sounds is pretty cool. That's, that's kind of fun. Fun fact, if you wear the Kind mask, you have a more powerful bubble attack underwater. The attention to detail in this game is nuts. There's a couple of deep cuts on the selection too, Drossia and Zero Masks? Uh, okay, that's cool. Getting to see newer renditions of Nago, Peach, and Choo Choo, that's nice, I like that a lot. Can't believe Dark Nebula is here. Old friend! I'm really crying in the club right now. And dude, Pick and Mine, are you, are you serious? The Rick and Kine counterparts from Dreamland 3 that you saw on one screen each and that's it? I love this? Sadly, Ku didn't have a counterpart in that game, so... Grayscale Ku instead? Suck it up, sport, you'll be fine. The only issue, the only issue with this screen is that Yellow Kirby is just called Yellow Kirby now, and after Dream Buffet had the audacity to bring Kibi back into the spotlight, this will not stand. If you're with me, tweet out with the hashtag justice for Kibi and you too can make a difference. All right, the moment that many of you have been waiting for, spoiler time. Uh, what? Spoilers? Isn't this a 10 plus year old game? What could there possibly be to spoil in this current year? Well, listen here, idiot, you big dumbo. You see the back of the box here? Magalore epilogue, brave and extra quest after the ending. There's new stuff. And I got thoughts. Hey, you know how Magalore betrays you at the end of the story and you banish him into the Shadow Realm? Yo, that's crazy. This is why Kirby fans everywhere have trust issues and thought Elflin was gonna stab you in the eyes in Forgotten Land. Well, Magalore Epilogue is here to let us know just what Magalore was up to after said banishment. With his outfit in tatters, Magalore wakes up in another dimension, similar to the chase levels from the main campaign. On your brief travel here, you run into a fruit fragment. You get told to collect more... Go. Gameplay-wise, Magalore does play quite differently than Kirby, sort of similar to how he played in the Star Allies guest star mode, but with a twist. Throughout the stages, you collect these magic spheres, and with them, you can upgrade all of your attributes, like all of them. The speed of your horizontal and vertical shots, the effectiveness of your shield, how much longer your specials will stick around, stuff like that. And while upgrading moves in, like, any game is inherently satisfying, you get the benefit of being able to grow longer chains during the gameplay. You see, you're not just collecting magic spheres by walking into them, you get them from defeating enemies, and get even more if you keep attacking them in a fast manner. And doing something like upgrading your trickery attribute benefits you because sometimes that will lengthen how long your chain could last without any activity. 
Me? Get up to my sneaky, dirty tricks again? I would never. Unless no one is looking. Y yep, that's something that someone super trustworthy would say. Learning the level designs to chain the best combos and go for the highest points is really the name of the game here, and it is way more satisfying than I thought it was going to be. Typically, these extra modes like Meta Nightmare and DDD Tour just play through the main game with a new character, and sure, it's not like visually we got anything crazy here with Magalore, but still, by having unique designs, sometimes pulled from the main game's chase segments, most times not, made for a consistently fun adventure for the roughly two hours it took to complete it, and even the bosses are more changed than I expected them to be. These aren't simply the main game bosses with the color swap, no no no. They also have new names. And based on said names, you can tell that these battles now have element properties too. It's pretty cool stuff. Or shocking stuff. Really just depends on the fight. And if you do your due diligence and pause the gameplay while you're in the battle, you can get a little bit of extra lore. This is the good stuff here. And when doing so, you can tell that all of these guys are working for a bigger bad guy. But huh, wait a second. I thought Magalore was the bad guy. Who's badder than this guy? Hmm. Well, once all of the fruit pieces are together, making a gem apple, yes, very important detail, Magalore then battles another Grand Doomer. Pretty cool, I mean, it's got some different attacks like the other bosses, uh, nothing too special here, goes down pretty easily, and then, this portal opens up, and... Oh. Cool, got it. Totally understood. No, no explanation needed. You made Wispy Woods, you, you made him a god. That's awesome and cool. Ah! Dude, like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, what do you, what do you mean? Huh, we, we got a biblically accurate Wispy Woods here as the final boss? What, <laughs> what is this? God, I love, I love Kirby so much, dude. This battle takes some inspirations from the previous battles against Eldritch Horrors in this franchise, but this really stands out on its own. Just based on the fact they final bossed a tree. You see, why this is a thing is because the gem apple seed that you freed from beating the crowned doomer immediately gets attached to the master crown, the thing that turned Magalore scary in the main campaign. So, simple math, you have a you have a seed that will turn into a tree combined with this source of evil, bam. Monstrous tree god. And it's a pretty fun battle too, finally being able to use all of Magalore's skills against a unique boss fight that isn't simply a reskin of something that Kirby fought before, it's really satisfying. This one move that he does when he comes like crashing down on you and then will continue to go into the ground and then stare at you, this is a tree jump scare. But even still, bing bang boom, you take him out no problem and once you're done, Magalore finds a conveniently placed sword. Well isn't that nice? He then uses his powers to make it gigantic in size, has one final anime clash of power, and then slashes it in half, defeating it. As this franchise continues to dethrone another god. You know, typical Kirby things. But you may be asking, what's to become of Magalore after all of this? Well thankfully, a new portal to the outside world opens up, and after wiping away a single tear, oh my god, poor baby, he jumps in for hopefully a brighter future. And if you pay attention to the credits images, you can see Magalore pops up in a new yet kind of familiar land alongside the gem apple seed. He sets up a shop in this brand new village to do some business and just like that, Team Kirby Clash Deluxe and Super Kirby Clash have been injected into the canon. It took a few years, but now we know why he was finally nice all of a sudden and dressed in green. Looks good on him too. I approve the new digs. See man, what did I tell you? Nicest guy you ever met. You you played Super Kirby Clash, right? He's like super nice in that game. It was just the crown that was messing him up. He's he's a great dude. In that game, if I remember correctly, he was like uh, giving you really good things, right? That was helping you on your quest, but they also kind of required actual money. They were microtransactions. He's responsible for microtransactions. This guy's evil. Magalore Epilogue is awesome. It's a little annoying that it's locked behind playing the whole main game to get the new stuff, but considering the plot is based off of the endgame plot twist, I guess it makes sense. Leave it to Hal to add story closure to a spin-off in what is seemingly just a run-of-the-mill remaster. I think when directly compared to another remake, Superstar Ultra, that game provided more new stuff than Return to Dreamland Deluxe did, but Magalore Epilogue raises the bar for those post-adventure alternate playable character modes. Can't wait for the next Kirby remake where you can play as the Dream Fork all of a sudden because we have to know why it popped up in front of Kirby that one time. I have so many questions after Dream Buffet, man, I, I need them answered. Worth quickly mentioning the arena here as well. I mean, yeah, it does act the same way it always did, to 
typical boss rush, but True Arena got some notable changes. Not only does it add the Magalore epilogue fights, so you can now battle biblically accurate Wispy Woods with Kirby, but the Magalore soul fight... Yo! Not only does he move faster and hit harder than he used to, not only does he still utilize the same super ability attacks that he did before, but also he conjures up sand tornadoes and shoots from the mecha cannons. This is... Oh, this is a scary fight. And if you haven't done this battle yet, you can thank me later for this information. Because getting 21 fights in and dying to attacks that you didn't see coming, I would be furious and snap my tiny switch cartridge in half. No thank you. Now you can tackle this with a steady mind. You're likely still going to be stressed out, but at least it'll be a little bit more steady. But with that all in mind, that wraps up the entire Kirby RTDL DX package. It's a good game. Are you... are you surprised? This video was longer than my Forgotten Land one. I don't know why I'm like this. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is an excellent remaster. They took a great game and made it a lot better. That's all it needed to be. It's a new Kirby release. Of course it's good. But now maybe, finally, we can like... Dude, like, come on now. After Forgotten Land and Dream Buffet and Return to Dreamland Deluxe and the original Dreamland and Tilt and Tumble and Amazing Mirror all coming to the Nintendo Switch Online Game Boy and Game Boy Advance apps, then maybe now, maybe now we can take a bit of a break, okay? The anniversary is over. We can maybe take like a year, work on something really special for, you know what? I'll be back in six months to talk about the next Kirby thing.